Hello, this is Rick Trent. Uh, before you purchase a diode, there's a few things you need to know. You need a, uh, a static, electrical static strap. You uh, mount this into a ground, something good in metal. This piece here goes around your wrist. Um, here's a, one of the 445 diodes. Here's one of my heat sinks. Um, the diagram shows you which one's your positive pin is, which is on the top of the little triangle here. Anytime you solder the diode in, here's a little uh, clamp that you can get at Radio Shack. What I usually do is set it down. Try lining it up real good. Let's see, the pins on this one are bent. These are some bad diodes, or I'd have a static strap on this. These pins are a little straighter. Okay, after you got it sitting like that, when you begin to solder, a lot of times I put a little dab here, make sure you get all the ribbon off that you can. Now, if you touch the soldering gun, let me slide it back where you can see it. If you touch the soldering gun here for over two seconds, you probably blow the diode. You just need to get it good and hot, use that there, I recommend using a uh, piece of wire three, about three inches long. This one's not on, I'm just showing you. Anyway, you put it like this here. This, you already pre-coat your wire. This one's not been pre-coated. This one has on the driver. Anyway, you pre-coat it. And after it's pre-coated, you would touch it to that. I will show you this. You would uh, heat this one up. Hopefully you can see this in the video. I heat this, get it warm, touch it like that, just a matter of a second, boom, and it's done. If you hold it there, you've blown your diode. You need to do it, get it warm, touch, boom. Repeat that. Get it warm, touch, and, you're, and it'll, it'll sort of matter one second. If you go two or three seconds, you rinse your diode. Um, as you notice, you always, always sorter with your diode in a heat sink. Never solder it out of the heat sink. You run your diode. You've lost your money. Uh, these dials are very sensitive. If you do it on carpet, you might as well throw your diode in the trash because you've shorted it out. These are very static, uh, anti-static friendly. Uh, any bit of static will blow these diodes instantly. Uh, make sure you use this proper tool. Make sure you've got a proper uh, heat sink. This is an annex module. Let's see if I can get it here in the video. The hoe, if you use this module, please, I repeat, please do not buy diodes from me. Buy them from somebody else because you will damage your diode. 50% uh, of the time, you're going to ruin your diode because these here have to be pressed in. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera. I'll try to get the camera. There is one hoe cut. That's all there is. There's no offset cuts for the, these little diodes have a stainless steel uh, top hats, what I call them. There's probably half a thousandth right there of metal. They do not cut that in their heat sinks for their diodes. So therefore, like I say, if you're using this, please don't buy your diodes from me or from somebody else because you're going to tear up a bunch of diodes. Um, here's my heat sink compared to it. Now, if you can see inside the heat sink, there's not only a hole, there's two offsets cut. You don't have to press it it just pops right in. Like I say, please have a good heat sink. See, and you can and you can also pull it out when you're done. It's a pretty snug fit. You got to put once it go in. It's a little harder getting out, but it you can basically push it in and out with your fingers. The eight oh, these dials are also case negative. The eight oh eights I sell. This one's a messed up one. Is let me get up here in the camera. 808. One of them has a little black hole around the pin, which that one's your negative. This one, the one that touches the case, this pin touches the case, you can see it's case positive. So therefore, if you use that diode, uh, you need to make sure you put it in the heat sink. Uh, any kind of host you get, you need to wrap tape around it where this heat sink, because the case is positive, doesn't touch the rest of your host 
because it will uh, actually act as a, a ground that can damage the diode or lower your amperage so you're not going to get the full power. So you need to isolate this with some kind of rubber insulation from the rest of your project if you're using 808s. Of course these are case negative. You can switch them to your negative on your switch through most uh, host. Here's a little driver. Uh, as you can see positive is in the center. Negative is anywhere on that outside the ring. This, these two go to the battery. Uh, I don't recommend going over 12 volts. Uh, works best. Of course here's your positive side going to the diode. You got positive here, negative here. They come with little cheap wires. I usually put some uh, better wiring on it uh, myself. You, they come out, I send them out with the cheap wire. It's up to you if you want to change it out or not. They will work, but I, I just like putting a little better quality wire on. I uh, hope that answers some of your question. Uh, if you're using my heat sink, all you have to do is snug it up. You put a little arctic silver uh, in the hole. Spread a little bit around here, and I just sort of give it a spin around after I get the Arctic Silver in. Your wires will be coming out. You're going to do fine. Uh, now with soldering guns, make sure you have a good uh, soldering gun. This is, this is, I don't use this. I've got no soldering station. I just use this for demonstration purposes. Uh, if you're on, if you haven't used it in a while, you need to check it. Uh, I had one went bad, and I believe five diodes in a row before I realized my soldering arm had gone bad. Another thing, if you do not use a driver and you use a high dollar power supply that can regulate voltage and resistance, I recommend you run it through a driver because about almost every power supply like that that you can buy on the market will spike to some degree. And I've had several people blowing diodes because it spiked when they first turned it on. So if you're not going to use a driver, use a LM350 or LM317, even though you have the high dollar adjustable power supply. I repeat, the adjustable power supplies without a driver will blow the diodes, almost guaranteed. So run it through a driver or through an LM350 and a resistor to keep from blowing diodes. Uh, there was actually a, several per, a couple people I know that had these power supplies now and uh, Come to find out, that's why they were blowing them because they weren't using a correct driver. Uh, do not go over the recommended voltage, uh, 1.25. If you do, you're assuming the, the diodes can blow instantly. Uh, I have pushed the diodes 1800 milliamps. Uh, the life can be months and months, years, or it can be a week. You never know when you push them to that high of amperage. So, therefore, if you're going to push them high, expect your uh, just Anticipate the dial's not going to last long if you go over 1.25. That's just a given. You never know. It's a guess. Um, some people are using the Casio dot. These are all from Casio projectors. Uh, some are uh, XJ140s and up. Some people are using the 130s, and I was told that they're not as powerful. I haven't tried it, but uh, I've heard from several other sellers that they're not as good. Uh, make sure you trust whoever you're buying your stuff from. Um, I hope this helped. If you have any further questions, please give me a call. Thank you.